Okay, so in this video I'm going to have a look at the 2022-2023 uh, Applied Maths Sample Paper, Higher Level. Now, in question 3, we have a particle which has initial displacement S0 from a fixed point P. It moves away from P with initial velocity U and constant acceleration A, which of course is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, or d2s dt squared. Use calculus to derive an expression for S, the displacement of the particle from P at any time t. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is uh, deriving, if you like, a couple of the SUVAD equations. So V is equal to U plus AT and S equal to UT plus half AT squared. So let's start with, um, actually I'll just draw a quick diagram of what's happening here first. So we have uh, the particle, or no, we have the point P, I should say, and we have the particle, let's say, here. And the particle is moving away from P at a rate of U meters per second and acceleration A meters per second squared. Now the distance between the particle and P here is S0, that's this distance here. Okay, so let's start. We know that, or at least we're told here in the uh, question, that A is equal to dV dt. Now, what we can do is just separate out the dt. So we've got a dt is equal to dv. And the next thing we can do is integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate a with respect to t and integrate dv, 1 dv if you like. Now, if we look at t here, we're starting at 0 and we're going out to t seconds. If we look at the velocity, we're starting at u, and final velocity is v. So let's do these two integrations. So on the left-hand side, if you integrate a, you get a t, and our limits are 0 to t. On the right-hand side, if we integrate dv, or just 1 dv if you like, you'll get v because we're integrating with respect to v, and our limits are u and v. So let's just put in these uh, limits here. So we're going to start here by putting t in. So that'll just give me a t minus a times 0 is equal to v minus u. So that'll give me a t is equal to v minus u, or just v is equal to u plus a t which you may recognize at this stage. Okay, so we have v is equal to u plus a t, and we know that this is equal to ds dt, the rate of change of distance or displacement in this case with respect to time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take u plus a t and ds dt, and what I'm going to do is just separate out this dt again. So we've got u plus a t dt, is equal to ds, and again integrate both sides, so we've got the integral u plus a t with respect to t is equal to the integral of ds this time. Now our time again goes from 0 out to t, and our displacement here is going to go from s0 out to s. Remember we're starting, the particle starts a distance s0 from p and it will go out to a distance of, let's say, s. Okay, so let's integrate both sides. So u plus a t, when we integrate it, well, the u is going to become u t, and the a t is going to become a t squared over 2. Remember, you're integrating with respect to t. Our limits are 0 and t, and on this side, if we integrate 1 with respect to s, we'll get s, and we're going from S0 to S. Okay, so let's just put in our limits here, put in T. We've got U T plus A T squared over 2. And then minus, if we put 0 in here and 0 in here, we we'll just end up with 0. So the whole thing is just minus 0. On the right-hand side, we've got to put in S minus S0. Okay, so we finally have our expression for S. Our displacement here is going to be S0 plus UT 
plus half a t squared. So you can see that this is probably the formula that you're familiar with, s equal u t plus half a t squared, but we're starting a distance s0 from the particle p, so we've got to add that on. Okay, so that's it for the first part of this question. Okay then, so let's have a look at part b. So we have uh, two athletes, Brian and Clara, they're taking part in a relay race. Brian is preparing to hand over the baton to Clara. During the handover of the baton, the athletes need to be running in the same straight line and at the same velocity. As Brian approaches Clara's position at a constant speed of 11 meters per second, Clara starts running from rest with constant acceleration f. A short time later, Brian begins to decelerate at 2 meters per second squared. Clara receives the baton 2.5 seconds after she starts running. The baton is exchanged when Clara is 75 centimeters ahead of Brian and when both athletes have a speed of 8 meters per second. After the baton is exchanged, Brian continues to decelerate at 2 meters per second squared until he comes to rest. Clara continues to accelerate at f until she reaches her maximum speed of 12 meters per second, which she then maintains. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is calculate the time it takes for Brian to decelerate before he exchanges the baton. So we're just going to look at Brian. And we're going to, let me just write down some of the details. Let me see. As Brian approaches Clara's position at a constant speed of 11 meters per second. So his initial speed is 11 meters per second. Um, he begins to decelerate at 2 meters per second squared, so that's minus 2 meters per second squared. And he needs to decelerate until he reaches a speed of 8 meters per second. So his final velocity has to be 8 meters per second. We want to work out the uh, time that this is going to take. Okay, so that's reasonably straightforward. We have uh, four formula we can use, but we're going to use uh, V is equal to U plus A T. His final velocity is 8. His initial velocity is 11. His acceleration is minus 2, and we've got to work out T. So if you work this out, you get a time of 1.5 seconds. So that's the time it takes Brian to decelerate from a speed or velocity of 11 meters per second down to a velocity of 8 meters per second. And that's really it for this part of the question. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, part two. Down to part two here. Use the axis below, draw an accurate velocity time graph for the motion of each runner. Time is measured from the instant that Clara begins to run. Relevant calculations should be shown in the space below. Okay, so we have a velocity time graph here, and we've got to put in the graph of, for both runners. So the first thing I'm going to do is just have a quick look at Clara's race. And we know that Clara, her initial velocity is u is equal to 0 meters per second. Her final velocity is 12 meters per second. Our acceleration is f meters per second squared. We don't know that. And we've got to work out, really, we've got to work out her time, how long it takes her to reach 12 meters per second. If we do that, we can draw her graph. Because she really just starts from rest. She accelerates constantly to a speed of 12 meters per second and then continues at 12 meters per second. So we can draw that fairly easily, I think, if we can just calculate the time here. But we don't have enough information there, so we're going to have to calculate f first. Now, what we do know is that Clara starts from rest, 0 meters per second. She accelerates, we know, to 8 meters per second, where she collects the baton. So she accelerates up until she reaches 8 meters per second. She collects the baton from Brian. But we know that Clara receives the baton 2.5 seconds after she starts running. So it's going to take her 2.5 seconds to reach 8 meters per second. So we can use that to work out her acceleration. Okay, so let's do that. So again, we, we know that she starts at 0 meters per second. 
Her final velocity this time is going to be 8 meters per second. Her acceleration we don't know, but we do know the time it's going to be 2.5 seconds. So what we're going to do is use uh, v is equal to u plus at, or in this case it's going to be ft. Uh, v, the final velocity is 8, her initial velocity is 0, f we've got to work out and it's going to take 2.5 seconds. This will give this will give an acceleration, this will give an acceleration of f which is 3.2 meters per second, 3.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so we now know what f is, so we can just put that in here. 3.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so now we can use these three bits of information here to work out the time. So again, we're going to use v is equal to u plus at, or ft, I should say again. So it's ft. So our final velocity this time is going to be 12 meters per second. Our initial velocity is zero. The acceleration we now know is 3.2 and we've got to work out the time. So if you do that, you get a time, you're going to get a time of 3.75 seconds. Okay, so we now know it takes 3.75 seconds for Clara to reach 12 meters per second velocity. So let's put that in. So uh, it's going to take 3.75 seconds so let's go out to 3.75, it's going to be here, so we're going to come up to here to reach 12 meters per second. Okay, so let's draw a line there if we can. Let's do that. We're going to go from here down to 0, 0. And then we know that she continues at that speed, so let's just go straight out here. Okay, so that's Clara's graph. Now let's, so this is Clara. So let's have a look at Brian then. So what do we know about Brian? Well, we know that they exchange batons at eight meters per second. So that's going to be here. We also know from question one here that Brian takes 1.5 seconds to decelerate before he exchange the bat exchanges the baton. So it's going to take him one and a half seconds to decelerate from, remember, 11 meters per second. So let's have a look at that. So he is at 11 meters per second, which is here, and it's going to take him one and a half seconds to decelerate. So if we start here and go back one and a half seconds, we're going to be here. So he must have been at 11 meters per second out to here. Then he starts to decelerate down to eight meters per second and so on until he rests. Okay, so let's just draw that. So we're going to start here. We're going to go through that point. We're going to end up here if we join up those two points. Okay, I'll just connect this up here. And that's it. This is Brian. And let's see, uh, Brian was decelerating at a rate of minus, let's see, 2 meters per second squared. Clara was accelerating at 3.2 meters per second squared. And that's it for this part of the question. Okay, so let's look at the next part of the question then. Calculate the distance between the two athletes when Clara begins to run. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at the distance that Clara has run and the distance that Brian has run when they exchange the baton. I'm going to subtract those two distances and that should give us our answer with a little bit of an adjustment which I'll talk about later on. Okay, so let's have a look at the distance that uh, Brian has run. So we know from uh, velocity time graphs that the distance is given by the area underneath the curve. So let's have a look at Brian first. So if we have a look at Brian, we can see that we've got to work out the distance this distance here. So let's see, we've got to break that down into a few different shapes. So let's see, I'm going to break it down into rectangle here, triangle up along here, and a rectangle here. So I'm going to find the area of this rectangle, this rectangle, and this, rec this triangle here. Add those three together and that should give me the distance that Brian has run when he has 
exchange the baton with Clara. Okay, so we're looking at Brian first. So we've got to find the area of this rectangle here first. So that's just simply going to be 1 times 11. Got to add that to, let's say, this rectangle here. So that's going to be 1.5 times 8. And then the area of this triangle here is going to be half the base. So the base is 1.5. And we've got to multiply that by, let's see, one, two, three units up along here. So this will give us our distance that Brian has run. Okay, so if we actually calculate all that, let's see, here we get one times 11, so that's gonna be 11, 1.5 times eight, so that is just 12, and then half 1.5 times three is 2.25. So the distance that Brian has run then in total is 25.25 meters. Okay, so now let's look at Clara. So Clara's distance then is gonna be this area here, this triangle here. So it's gonna be just simply half the base, which is 2.5. And we've gotta multiply that by the height here, which is eight. So this is the distance that Clara will have run. So let's just do that. So the distance that Clara will have run then is half of 2.5 times eight. So that's just 10, 10 meters. So we want to find the distance between the two athletes when Clara begins to run. So the distance then, the distance between when Clara begins or starts to run is it's going to be 25.25 meters minus 10 that's the difference between the two runners and then we've got to add 0 0.75. This is the little adjustment that we've got to make because it says in the question that the baton is exchanged when Clara is 0 0.75 centimeters ahead of Brian when both athletes have a speed of eight meters per second. So we've got to account for this 75 centimeters or 0 0.75 a meter. Okay, so when we do all of that, then we just get 16 meters. And that's our answer. That's the distance between the two athletes when Clara begins to run.